Okay, so in this video we're going to continue on with our practice topology zero that we made in a previous video. Everything's all set up, my routers are already up and running. And all right, so in the last video what we did is we made the made the routers, made their interfaces, gave them IP addresses, and we ping from one side to the other. So right now I'm on uh, router zero, and uh, actually let's let's change the host name of this router because it's still stuck on router. So host name router zero, just so we know, and exit out of there. And just for kicks, I'm going to ping the other side, ping 192.168.1.2. Boom, we can ping the other side. Okay. Now let's say we want to actually ping this loopback here. And the reason we use loopbacks is it simulates another network over here. And there would be another interface. And let's say there would be computers connected off of this network. It's, it's basically for pretend. Uh, we could have just as easily put another router here put another Ethernet interface, but that takes up extra resources. So this is an easy way to do things. If I try to ping that loop back from router zero, it's not going to work. And just for kicks, we are going to do it. And you can see it dies out. So now the question is why? Why does the ping not get to the other side? Well, it's basically how routers work. So if we do a show IP route, and what show IP route is, is it says it will show all of the routes that your, your router knows about. So you have to think about a router. It doesn't really know what's going on um, other than what you tell it. So we actually haven't told it very much. We've got a C route here, a couple of C routes. And what C is, it's a directly connected link. So it's not actually a route. It's, it's just a, a link. And you can see here, we've got a 10 network here. And that's the loop pack. It's directly connected. And so it knows how to get to the 10 network, 10 0, 0, 0. right there. And it knows how to get to the 192.168.1.0 network because that's co directly connected over here. So when we did the ping, I'll just hit the up arrow a couple times, that ping 20.0.0.1, what happened here was the router looked at this took the number, went through the IP routing table and said, okay, well, uh, does 20 match this line right here? Nope. Does 20 match that line? Nope. There's no default route. There's no uh, fallback route. So if it doesn't know or it doesn't have the route in its routing table, it will drop the route or drop the, the ping packets in this case. And you're going to have the same issue on the other side. All right, so let's add a static route. Go into conf t, do IP route. Okay, so where do we want to get to? Well, we want to get to the other sides, which is the 20.0.0.0 network. So IP route 20.0.0.0. And we're going to put in a subnet mask. And if you don't know the syntax, you can always hit the question mark. You know, it's asking you for a subnet mask, and subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So what you're saying is, I want to get to this route in that subnet mask. Now you have to tell it how to get there. So you're going to get to this network through this IP address, so the dot two IP address. Okay, so we'll hit the question mark just to, just to help us out the forwarding router's address. So it's it's not your address, you already know that. It's the next hop. 192.168.1.2. We'll hit enter. All right, we've got a static route in there. Let's uh, let's do a show IP route on this router. So now we have a static route to get to the 20.0.0.0 network, and it says I can get there via the 192.168.1.2. So to get to here, I'm going to send the packet to here. Seems to make sense. Let's do a, our ping again, and it should still be in our buffer. Right there, hit the up arrow a couple times, ping 20.0.0.1. Let's see if it works. Hey, it seems to work pretty nice. Okay. 
Okay, but wait a minute here. Let's say we were a computer on this loop back on this link right here. And we tried to ping all the way over here. Would the ping make it back to us? Well, let's see if we can actually ping from a loopback interface. So when we first did the ping before, if I hit the up arrow, when we did this ping, it actually sent the ping out from this interface. And the responding packets went to the loopback and then came back and hit this one. Hit the fast zero zero interface. What we want to do is we want to send the pings from here and have the responding packets also hit this interface. So what we have to do is called it's called an extended ping. So we have to be in enable mode. Type in ping. It's asking us protocol IP. Okay, that sounds good. Target IP address. It's 20.0.0.1. Repeat count five looks good. Datagram size 100. That's fine. All these things in brackets, they're the default. So if you hit enter, it's going to take that. Extended commands. Yes, you want extended commands. Source address. Okay, the source address is going to be 10.0.0.1. Hit enter, type of service zero, that sounds good. Uh, just hit enter there, enter there, enter there, enter there. Uh, basically just keep hitting enter. Hey, we see a little problem here. Okay, so now the pings fail. So why do the pings fail? Well, we sent the ping from 10.0.0.1 to 20.0.0.1. So you can think of it as there was an Ethernet cable here. The packet hits this router. This router looks into its IP routing table, the show IP route. It says, can I get to the 20 network? Sure it can. We know that because if we look in our IP routing table, we've got a route to the 20 network. Going to minimize that. It hits router 1. Router 1 then hands it off to the loopback interface. That's not a problem. The loopback interface, you can uh, visualize it as it sends a packet back into router 1, and then we've got a problem. Oops. On router 1, if we do a show IP route, remember when we did the ping last time, we were trying to reach the 192.168.1.1 interface, and that pinged without a problem. Here, we're trying to reach the 10.0.0.1 interface, and that's dying out. Well, we could see here that we don't have a route to the 10 network at all. In fact, we could verify this. If we're on router 1, we can ping 10.0.0.1, and it's not going to ping. So we're going to rectify this problem. We're going to add a static route on the other side. So generally, when you're de dealing with two, route, two routers, what you do on one side, you're probably going to need to do it on the other side. So I'm going to go into conf t, static route. I want to reach the 10.0.0.1 network, put in our mask. And our next top interface is 192.168.1.1. Put it there. OK, let's see. we got a problem here. IP route. OK. So instead of trying to reach dot one, we're actually going to reach the network itself. There is a way to actually do it with the dot one there, but we're going to probably cover that in a, another video. All right, so that looks good. IP route 10.0.0.0 slash 24 mask. Next hop is 192.168.1.1. Exit out of there. Do a show IP route. Yes, we do have a route to the 10, 10 network again. Ping 10.0.0.1. We have a success. All right, so the moment of truth. Go back to router 0. Do the extended ping, so just ping, protocol IP, target IP address 20.0.0.1, enter, 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 extended commands, yes, source interface 10.0.0.1, keep hitting enter, and let's see if it works. Boom, it works. So now you have full reachability between the loopback addresses, and that was done with a simple static route and a static route on both sides. Thanks a lot for watching.